Hello, today I'm going to tell you a story about a woman named Dorothea Puente. She was a 51-year-old woman who lived in Sacramento, California. Puente was loved by her local community as she cared for her neighbors. Every week of Wednesday was a burrito day on which she would give free food to the community. Puente occasionally would donate clothes for the betterment of community as Sacramento was the last resort for many homeless people back then and would encourage others to do so. However, no one would have thought the horrifying truth behind the nice and generous old woman. Dorothea Puente ran a boarding home at her place. She would live on the top floor, and the boarders would live down below. Most of the boarders were the type of the people that were not accepted by the society such as homeless, elderly people, and mentally ill people. These people would give their paychecks to Dorothea, and in return they would get a place to live and food to eat. It was a fair deal for these people. One of her first victim was Ruth Monroe, who was a friend of Puente. Puente convinced Monroe of opening a restaurant together. After some time of opening a restaurant, Puente would ask for more money from Monroe by claiming that the restaurant needs more money. Puente kept taking money like this from Monroe for a couple of months until Monroe was diagnosed with cancer. Ruth Monroe did not want it to be alone in this time, so she decided to move into Dorothea's boarding home. After a while, Monroe's son came to visit her at the Puente's home. He was told by Puente that he can't see his mother as she is resting. However, he ignored and went to his mother's room where she was resting. He tried to talk to his mother, but she did not respond as she looked too unwell to talk to him. So he did not want to disturb his mother. So he left. The next day he received a call from Puente that his mother passed away and she asked him to take his mother's belongings from her house, which was an empty purse. Monroe was kind of a person that would have enough cash in her purse and jewelry that she would wear, but Puente said that Monroe gifted all of that to her. After the autopsy arrived, the drug levels in her system were all toxic level. That is enough to kill a person. However, Dorothea had already called the authorities and told that her roommate had committed suicide. Monroe's son was sure that Dorothea had something to do with this. However, at that time in 1982, the forensics were not that advanced so there was no evidence to suggest that Ruth Monroe has not committed suicide. That's not it. After a while, a social worker named Judy brought Bert to Puente's boarding home. Bert had schizophrenia and no family in US. Dorothea Puente had a type of personality that would make anyone comfortable around her. She would give warm welcome to any guest visiting and her contributions to the community were all famous around the area. This led Judy to decide that this may be the best place for Bert. No one would have thought that this decision could cost Bert's life. For a few weeks, Bert had a good time in her place as he was making friends and socializing with his other boarding members. However, after a few months when Judy called in to check on Bert, she was told by Puente that Bert had left her place with his relative in Mexico. From there on, Judy suspected that there is something really wrong going on in her place. Judy reported a missing person report to police, which led a detective to Puente's home to ask for some questions about Bert's disappearance. The officer asked questions to Dorothea and her boarders. All of the boarders, including Dorothea, said the exact same story, except one boarder, named John Sharp, who slipped a note to officer which says, she wants me to lie to you. Upon interviewing John Sharp, he told the officer that he don't know where Bert went. It was Dorothea that want him to lie that he went to Mexico with his relative. Moreover, he told the officers that Dorothea has been digging some holes recently, which startled the officers. The officers went back to Dorothea's and asked if they could have look at her house, of which she agreed. When looking at her house, officers found a lot of pills and capsules at every corner of the house. These pills were normally used for people with sleeping disorder, but with a very limited amount. Dorothea had the past of knocking out her victims by these pills and then stealing from them. 
These evidence led detectives to dig at her backyard to see if they could find anything unusual. After a few minutes of digging, what they found on her backyard were far from usual. It was a human remains. Reinforcement were brought to do more digging in her backyard, if they could find other human remains. After a few more digging, police have found another dead body. During this time, Dorothea stayed firm by denying all allegations, which gives officers no choice but to keep digging. These two human remains were DNA tested. What startled officers was that neither of these body were of Bert. They kept digging, until they found the third human remains. This was a large human which matched the physical description of Bert. After the DNA test, it was confirmed that it was actually Bert. By this time, Dorothea was not legally arrested. So she went to the restaurant around the block when police were digging into her backyard. She fled from the restaurant and was found days later in a hotel in Los Angeles. She was arrested and brought back to Sacramento Police Department. At this time, there was a total of seven bodies recovered from her backyard. All the victims were her boarders. She would kill them and cash their checks even after their death. That let her live a comfortable life with a status that she would donate to the local politicians' campaign. The clothes that she would donate were all from her victims. This unusual case was getting a lot of fame throughout the state. One day, police received a phone call from a family of Everson Gilmouth, who was engaged to Dorothea, and they haven't heard from him, and were anxious as they were watching the news about Dorothea Puente. Police had found a John Doe a few years earlier by the river similar to the type of bodies found in Dorothea's backyard. Further, it was confirmed that it was Everson Gilmouth, her fiancé, who she killed just four to five weeks after he moved to Dorothea's home.